If you're excited to be in God's presence, put your hands together. Let's go. Hey. Oh, hey. Put your hands up. Hey. Listen, see. Can you to be hey, forever? You're too wise for mistakes. Yes, you are the mighty God, perfecting all your ways. You were here hey, before our first breath, and you'll be here when nothing else is left. You are the mighty God. Hey, forever say you're too big. Hey. Forever, yeah. Forever. You're too wise. You're too wise for mistakes. You are the mighty, perfecting all your. All your way. You were hey, before our first breath, and you be when nothing else is left. You are the mighty God. Forever, hey, say. Say, oh, you love me in spite of my flaws. Hey. You hold me close in the midst of it all. Your presence when I am in it. I'm grateful. Say, say you love me when no one else could tell. You kept me when no one else could tell, thank you for being God. 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 So you're too big. Say forever. Forever. You're too wise. You're too wise for mistakes. So you are mighty. Perfect in all your ways. Before our first breath, and you'll be here when nothing else is left. Oh, you are, you are, you are forever. Say, say, oh, oh, say, in spite of my flaws, you hold me in the midst of it all. Your present down, Jesus. You won't give up. Um, say you love me. Say when no one else could. You kept me, Jesus. Hey, when no one else could do. Thank you for being God. Thank you for being God, Jesus. Thank you for being God. Thank you for being God. Say you love me. Say when no one else could. Thank you for being God. Thank you for being God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being God. Thank you for being God. Thank you for being God. You love me so much that you gave it all for me. Now I give my life to you. Thank you for being God. Jesus, oh, for your love and your kindness, we worship you, our King. Hey. Oh, hey. thank you, Jesus. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Say, hey. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. You're, worthy. You're worthy. I'm grateful. Hey. You're worthy. You're worthy. Oh, 
Yeah. 
so grateful for your love we love you we love you we love you there's no king like you no god like you we're so grateful we're so thankful we lift your name on high jesus we lift your name on high we lift your name on high with a song of praise Cause you are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Oh. Yeah. I've come before you today, and there's just one thing that I wanna say. You say, thank you, Lord. Oh, I just wanna say. For all you've given to me, oh, for all the blessings that I can explain, oh, say, thank you, Lord, oh, Jesus, I just want to say, thank you, Jesus, we bless you, Lord. With a grateful heart, come with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm. Oh, I'll bless your name, yeah. With a grateful heart, Jesus, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm. Oh, Jesus, I'll bless your name. With an arm stretched arm, oh, I'll bless your name. One more time, we say, with a grateful heart. Thank you, Jesus. With a song of praise, with an arm stretched arm, I'll bless your name. I'll bless your name. Say thank you. Oh, Jesus, we say thank you. Wherever you are today, can I just ask that you wave your hands to Jesus and give him all the praise. I wanted to just celebrate the God, God's faithfulness this evening or this afternoon, whatever time of day it is, wherever you are. Can you just open your mouth and give him thanks because this is the month of March. God has brought us into a new month. God has preserved our lives. God has, is watching over us. He has kept us. Can you give him all of the praise? Can you give him all the worship? I want to just open your mouth and say thank you. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for strength. Thank you for health. I want us to thank God for the things that you ordinarily might not even have noticed about yourself or in your life. 
I want you to give him thanks for the things that other people take for granted. The breath in your nostrils, your capacity to speak and to move around, your, the roof over your head, the food that you're able to put on your table. Can you give him praise tonight? I want to just celebrate his name. I want to give him thanks for his faithfulness. Just celebrate him. Father, we give you praise. Lord, we celebrate you. We are grateful unto you. We bring our gratitude. We say be exalted in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have given you worship. Amen. All right, so just before we go ahead, I'd like us spending the next couple of minutes praying this evening. And as you know, that this month of March, our theme at the Elevation Church is grow, all right? Um, and I want you to think about it. I want us to read from the book of Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, I'm going to read verses 31 and 32. The Bible says, Another parable he put forth to them, saying, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, can you mark that? When it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the hair come and nest in its branches. Can I, I want you to go ahead and pray this evening that in this month of March, you will experience growth in the name of Jesus. I want you to go ahead and pray that in this month of March, in every single area of your life, you will experience growth in the name of Jesus. That you will experience growth in every area of your life. You will experience emotional growth. You will experience mental growth. You will experience financial growth. You will experience spiritual growth in the name of Jesus. That all through this month, you will experience growth in your capacity to do bigger things in the name of Jesus. That all through this month, you will go through whatever experience you need to go through to be able to grow. That this month, you are moving to the next level of your capacity. You are moving to the next level of your ability. That there is no stagnancy in your life in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree. I want you to declare in the name of Jesus that in this month of March, your state is changing. It is becoming something bigger. It is becoming something more prominent than what you have experienced before in the name of Jesus. Your vision is growing. Your capacity to solve problems is growing. Your capacity to be of help to other people is growing in the name of Jesus. It says it becomes a tree so that the birds of the hair the birds of the head come and nest in its branches. I want you to declare that in this month of March, that the God of heaven and the heart and the Holy Spirit are working in you so that other people can find value in you in the name of Jesus. So that other people can be attracted to you to derive value through your life in the name of Jesus. I want you to ask that in this month of March, God is setting you on a course of growth in the name of Jesus. God is removing, the Holy Spirit is removing around you the things that impede growth in the name of Jesus. That you are coming across resources that will help you to grow in the name of Jesus. That your mind is being stretched to grow in the name of Jesus. Your capacity to envision new things is growing in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you thanks. We bless your holy name. Father, we are grateful because we know that in this season we're going to experience growth. You need growth in different areas of our lives. I want to just go ahead and for the, just the next 30 seconds, I wanted to speak to God specifically about one thing, one thing that you want to see change and grow in your life in this month of March. Can you open your mouth? I want you to really personalize this one. I want you to personalize it and just say, God, I want to see growth in this area. I want to see this thing grow in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, whatever you lay your hands upon will prosper. And that's prosperity there speaks about growth. And I want you to declare in the name of Jesus that in this month of March, this particular thing grows in the name of Jesus. It might have struggled to grow before now, but God will give you the wisdom to to cause it to grow and to nurture it in the place of growth in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you thanks. Lord, we give you all of the praise. Can you just go ahead tonight and just thank God for answered prayers? If you believe that God has answered your prayers, can you just thank him? I want you to thank him. I want you to give him all the praise. I want you to appreciate him. If you believe that God has answered your prayers, that the things that he have asked for, they will manifest. That this month of March is going to change the trajectory of the course of your year in the name of Jesus. Father, we celebrate you. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. All right, so wherever you are listening to me today, if you believe that God has really, really, truly answered your prayers, right? I want you to go on that platform where you're joining from and just tell me, you know, what it is that you're going to see grow in this month of March. What growth are you going to experience? And thank God for it. Hallelujah. Can you put your hands together for Jesus wherever you are? I want you to put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Um, hallelujah. Amen. 
Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, so thank you. You're welcome to Switch. This is our midweek event. Um, we're very glad to welcome you and to be hosting you today. This is the first in the month of March. Um, usually, we will have um, a, a brief exhortation, then we'll have prayer and communion. Uh, but today, we're doing something slightly different, all right? Um, as you would have seen us advertise, we have um, an amazing man in the auditorium today who is going to be speaking to us. Um, he's speaking live from the Pieces Conference Center in Lagos. And of course, wherever you're joining us from, I, I trust that your heart is set and that you have an expectation, all right, um, to hear something that will be transformational for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, so today, um, we're going to be speaking about the DNA of excellence. The DNA of excellence, all right? And I believe that an understanding of the DNA of excellence, the things that make people to excel in different areas of life, is one rudiment of growth. It's something that you need to understand. It's something that um, when you catch the revelation behind excellence, right, it will propel you um, to want to grow and to take specific actions to grow. Hallelujah. All right, so um, without taking much more time, I'm just going to go ahead and read the profile of our guest, all right? Um, so if it's your first time of joining us um, at our midweek event, we say you're welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. We're going to be recognizing you and welcoming you um, at some point in the course of the event, all right? Um, if all also, as is our practice, um, at some point later, we're going to be breaking bread and taking communion together. Um, so I'd like to encourage you to have with you your communion elements as well so that there is no distraction. And of course, please, can I beg you that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whether you're in the office, whether you're driving, I want you to concentrate very, very well, you know, over the course of the next um, 50 minutes to one hour, all right? And I want you to take note of the things that God is going to be saying to you. God is going to speak to us, send us instructions, send us unique ideas of what you need to do to make sure that you experience excellence and growth in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to read very quickly Kevin's um, profile. So our guest tonight is Kevin Bond. And Kevin Bond is perhaps the finest producer in the gospel music industry today with production credits for prominent gospel artists spanning the past 20 to 30 years, from the likes of Donald Lawrence and the Tri-City Singers, the Kurt Carr Singers, Trinity 5-7 in the early 1990s, to Kirk Franklin, Donnie McLaughlin, Yolanda Adams, Bishop T.D. Jakes, Marvin Sapp, E.T.C., amongst many others. He was also commissioned by Steven Spielberg to produce a song for the Prince of Egypt soundtrack. He's a native of Chicago, Illinois. Um, Ke Kevin arrived on the gospel music scene in 1983 at the age of 19. His fresh approach to music directing, coupled with his ultra-clean, innovative, yet sophisticated piano technique, won him favor with the renowned Walter and Edwin Hawkins and the Hawkins family, thus coming into an environment that served as a major foundation for his ultimate musical destiny. I want you to pay attention to this, right? His works have garnered an outstanding 10 Grammy Awards, 30 Stellar Awards, and numerous other awards, all right? So if someone has won more than 40 awards over the number of years that they have worked, then you know that they're doing something excellently. So you must pay attention and listen to them. So Kevin currently serves as the Director of Worship and Heart at the Greater Travelers Rest Baptist Church in Decatur under the pastorate of E. Dewey Smith Jr. Kevin also serves as CEO of his music production company, Bonded Music. He's also founder of Flow, Follow the Leading of the Wind, a band of studio musicians he organized to educate and instruct up-and-coming artists. Kevin and his beautiful wife, Tony, reside in Atlanta, Georgia with their children. Can we you put your hands together this evening, wherever you are, whatever, I don't care what you're doing, I want you to just give Kevin a rising ovation as we receive him to come and speak to us. So this is the way it's going to go. Kevin will come, he will speak, and then I'll come back and ask him some questions, all right? So I'm going to interview him on your behalf, ask him questions, you know, that I believe you want to learn things, I believe you want to know about excellence. So one more time, can we put our hands together for Kelvin Bond as he comes to speak to us this evening? Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you so much for the wonderful reception. You may be seated. To Pastor PG, thank you for the opportunity, sir. I appreciate you allowing me to stand in your house and speak to your people. Uh, to my incredible host, Ola, I thank you for the, the gift of access, as we say. I thank you for the gift of access. And to all God's children, it's great to see you. It's great to be here with you. 
The DNA of excellence. The DNA of excellence. I love acronyms. So when you gave me this acronym, you set me up because I love acronyms. So let's talk about DNA. DNA for me stands for drive, novel, ability. Your drive, your novel, ability of excellence. The drive, what is, the, what, is, what, is your, what is your drive? Drive is the thing that causes you to get up in the morning. What moves you? What forces you to get out the bed? What forces you to get excited about life every day? Your drive, your drive. Mm-hmm. What's the motive and the force behind your actions? What is the thing that propels you forward? If you're not moving, it's because you don't have a drive. So we have to develop first the drive, the instinct to be able to move forward. The N stands for the word novel, novel. Most of us, when we think of novel, we think of a book. But no, not this particular word, novel. This novel is something new and unusual. Hmm. The force that makes me move towards something new and unusual unusual, something that's different from anything that's ever been seen before. It's novel. It's unique. It's, it's one of a kind. It's its own. What, what, what's, what's your drive? What's your novel? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And the last one is that ability, that talent, that skill set, that rubric, that, that those principles that you live and abide your life by. The DNA. What is your DNA? Ma'am, sir, no matter where you are, no matter where you're watching from, even those in the sanctuary today, what is it that drives you? What's new and exciting and innovative? And what is that skill set that you put together? And then you got to add the word excellent. Excellent means surpassing everything else, something that's different and more excellent than anything else. The Bible tells us that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. There is nobody else with your DNA. Nobody else with your DNA. What you have is uniquely yours. God has given it to you and to you alone. Jesus said that we're supposed to occupy in the New Testament, in the Gospels, he said we're supposed to occupy till he comes. We're supposed to find that place in business, that place in life, that place in relationship, that place in culture, that place even in the diaspora to flourish. Occupy that space. The Old Testament said to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. That means be busy. Find that place. What is that DNA that makes you move? The force behind the action. The new and exciting novel thing. The ability, the excellence that goes along with it. When I think of uh, uh, DNA, I, I can easily go back through some of the characters in the Bible. There are many characters who give us glimpses of what their DNA really was. I can think of the first, one of the first kids in the Bible, his name was Abel. You know Abel. Abel was the son of Adam and Eve. They only had two kids at that first, uh, uh, when we first hear about them, we only hear about Cain. We hear about Abel and we know that (sighs) Abel is the one that his brother killed. He was actually the first martyr ever mentioned in scripture. Mm. He gave his life. Mm. He was a type and a shadow of Jesus Christ. Uh Abel, he shed his blood as even a sacrifice. That type and shadow of, of Christ himself. Abel is memorialized for offering God an excellent gift. What was his DNA? Was to do what God asked him to do, to be obedient to God, to till the earth, to also, no, his brother tilled the earth. He was the keeper of sheep. He was the keeper of sheep. And he did so in such a way that when it came time to bring his offering, he bought the exact offering God required. That was his DNA. But if I go deeper, I can find a gentleman by the name of Joseph also in the book of Genesis. Joseph excelled from the pit all the way to the palace. He was loved by his father, hated by his brothers, sold into slavery, promoted by Potiphar, avoided a sex trap with Potiphar's wife. 
in prison unjustly redeemed through his dreams and then placed in the second seat of power. What an incredible story. Another type and shadow of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He had that DNA of, of Christ himself. Hmm. Let me, let me help you with something. You and I have that same spiritual DNA as well. Mm -hmm. The Bible said that we're made in his image and his likeness. Mm. I won't stop with just Abel and Joseph, though. We can even talk about Daniel. He and his friends, the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who refused to defile themselves with anything from the king. They maintain their standards and they refuse to worship the idol. Mm. Isn't that interesting? We still have cultures right now that are still worshiping the idol. But our DNA tells us that we cannot do that. The force behind the novel ability, that level of excellence pushes us to a different place with our relationship with God, but also in our daily lives. When they were thrown into the fire, they gave us the first sighting of Jesus Christ who had not yet even been born in the Old Testament. For they said that we, we put three in the furnace, but the fourth one looks like the son of God. So we see a type and a shadow of Jesus Christ even in the Old Testament long before, hundreds of years before he was even born. Why? Because he wanted us to see the DNA. He wanted to give us a glimpse of what that DNA looks like. So we wouldn't have to wait to the New Testament to get there. They wouldn't have to wait to the New Testament to get there. That DNA is resident throughout the Bible as we continue through. There was a woman by the name of Dorcas in Acts 9. Her name was Dorcas. She also had, she had an Aramaic, an Aramaic name as well as a Greek name. So she was Dorcas, but they also called her Tabitha. She was a famous designer. She was Kate Spade. She was Donatella Versace before we ever knew of those names. She was so famous that uh, uh, when she died, everybody, all the women that she had created garments for showed up at her funeral and put on the garments and did a fashion show for the fashion designer who had passed off the scene. She's one of the first female entrepreneurs that we read about in scripture. We're talking about DNA here. Her drive, her novel ability of excellence. Dorcas, Tabitha, Donatella, Kate Spade, Liz Claiborne before we ever knew who she was. She was walking around with red bottoms in the book of Acts and we think it's something new. It's not new. Dorcas, she was already in that page. She had an incredible spiritual DNA, but when you go back to Acts 9, you also find out that she did not just have an entrepreneurial spirit, she also had a giving spirit. It says she was full of good deeds, good works and alms deeds. We don't hear that word alms too much. Alms means giving to the poor. Dorcas was so enamored with uh, 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 those that did not have, that she made sure that whenever she had opportunity, she was out there serving them as well. Mm. Dorcas had a very unique spiritual DNA. Her drive, mm -hmm. her novel ability of excellence. And then there's also in Acts 9, a gentleman by the name of Ananias. Ananias, many of you think you know who I'm talking about? You're thinking about Ananias and his wife. We call her Sapphira, but her name is actually pronounced Sophore. Mm, she's bougie, yeah. Sophore and Ananias to your table, sir. Yeah, but not those two. There's actually three different people by the name of Ananias in the book of Acts, ironically. One is a high priest. One is the thief with his wife who stole money, remember that? But this other Ananias is one that we're not too familiar with. Hmm. <laughs> he almost serves as a type and a shadow of a John the Baptist who, who, who operated in the same sense that he did in a sense, but also a type and shadow of Jesus Christ as well. It was in his DNA. This particular gentleman by the name of Ananias was the one that the Holy Spirit instructed to go to Paul 
after the Damascus Road incident. Paul was actually sitting in a home blind for three days. And after three days, the Holy Spirit unctioned Ananias, go lay hands on Paul. And when you lay hands on him, he's going to be healed. He's going to be able to see. Ananias was like, what do you mean? Me go touch Paul? Paul, the guy that kills people? You want me to touch him? You got to be kidding me. I love the fact that Ananias was honest with his fears. He was able to tell God even about his fears, even though he had spiritual DNA. Hello. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have fears. You're not going to have challenges. He was able to voice his fears, voice his challenges. And God let him know, don't worry about him. I've unarmed him. He's praying and fasting. Wait a minute. You telling me Paul is praying and fasting? Are you kidding me? The guy that's been killing people, the guy that's got papers to lock me up if he sees me, maybe I should just leave him blind so he don't see me and go on about my way. No, no, no. Ananias' DNA was too strong for him to refuse God's command. He took that journey, touched Paul, did one of Jesus' moves, and restored his sight. Ananias. Somebody else with some spiritual DNA. But then there's a gentleman by the name of Barnabas. There's a gentleman by the name of Barnabas in, in Acts 12 who welcomes Paul back to Jerusalem. Ananias helped Paul get his journey started, introduced him to people there in Damascus, whom he was there to first of all persecute. So they were doubtful, as you can imagine. But then Barnabas goes and gets him and brings him back to Jerusalem and introduces him to the apostles. Mm. What kind of DNA is that? for you to get the bad guy and introduce him to all your good people. Wow, that's a different type of spiritual DNA. It's a different drive, different novel ability and excellence. Hmm. <laughs> a couple other characters and, and we'll move this thing along. There's a gentleman by the name of Joseph of Arimathea and another guy that we've been calling Nicodemus for a million years. But when you look up his name, he got a bougie name too. His name is bougie. His name is Nicodemus. Nicodemus. Yeah. Anybody seen Nicodemus recently? Yeah. Joseph of Arimathea, very noted, sat in the Sanhedrin council, very well respected gentleman. You don't hear much about him until the end of Jesus' life, he shows up on the scene. Yeah, you've heard about him before. You might not remember his name, but Joseph of Arimathea is the gentleman who gave Jesus his tomb to be buried in. But it wasn't just a little hole in the ground. Now, don't get this thing twisted. He didn't just give Jesus a little six-foot grave that they're going to dig out and throw some dirt on it and put a flower on it and walk away and come back once a year and, and revisit it. No, 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 no. Joseph of Arimathea, please, please pull up a chair. Pay attention to this. He gave Jesus a walk-in mausoleum that was hewn out of a rock. I'm going to say it one more time. A walk-in mausoleum. How do we know it was walk-in? Because the Bible says that when they came back the next day, the angel was sitting up there looking at him, and the tomb was empty. That means it was at least big enough for two people. It also said that the women that walked with Jesus went to the tomb, so it's at least big enough for at least those three women. A walk-in mausoleum that was cut out of a rock. He was a very rich man. Arimathea meant the heights. He lived in the heights. He didn't live down here with us. He lived up there on the hill. Joseph of Arimathea. His DNA. Hmm. Hmm. So I did a little bit of research. He and Nicodemus came Nicodemus came with the spices. He came with the, with the, with the Rouge 540. Yeah, with the high-end Tom Ford cologne to anoint the body of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Joseph of Arimathea's tomb alone in today's prices would have cost $500,000. That's DNA. You will give $500,000 to a dead man. 
That's DNA. Nicodemus, he couldn't be outdone now. He wasn't going to be outdone. He wasn't coming with something cheap. His spices today would have cost $225,000. $725,000 that they bought at the end of Jesus' life to give as a sacrifice. Spiritual DNA. Mm. Their drive. Novel, doing something new, different than anybody had ever done. Their ability, their talents, their skill sets had earned them the money to be able to buy what they needed and then offer it to Jesus. Now, what's interesting about the two of them, though, is that Joseph got his tomb back. Nicodemus didn't get his spices back. It was a little easier for Joseph to give the $500,000 tomb away because he knew that Jesus was getting up in three days. But Nicodemus gave that sacrifice knowing he was never getting it back. What kind of spiritual DNA is that? What is in your spiritual DNA? And I got to finish with the last guy. You know the last guy. He's, he's, our, he's our muse. Anybody who sings, anybody who plays, he's our worship muse. That guy, you know his name. What's his name? David, David that guy. We know him. At least we think we know him. We think we know him. You know who I call David? I call David the Mike Tyson of his day. David was not just a common guy. No, no, no. David was like the Mike Tyson of his day because he knocked out the giant. Nobody else could knock out a giant bigger than he without all of the accoutrements needed to do so. He wouldn't put on Saul's armor. He said, I can't fit that. He wouldn't take up a, a, a bow, you know, wouldn't take a spear. He said, all I need is my, my slingshot and the rock, I'm good. Looked like Mike Tyson. Mike used to walk in the room, in the, in the ring with no socks on, just the shoes, no headgear, just raw and win. That was David back in his day. You know David from 1 Samuel 22, it says that David organized a group of people, catch this, catch this, that were, and this is in scripture, they were in debt, they were distressed and discontented. And he turned them into his 400 fighting men. DNA. What would you have done with 400 people who were in debt, distressed, and discontented? Most of us would have found another room. Not David. They would, that's just who I needed. David said, that's exactly who I needed because of his DNA. His drive let him know that I can turn them into warriors. His novel ability said that, oh, this is going to be new and exciting. There's, nobody has ever done this before. I got something special here. And he did just that. David. Yeah, yeah. I'm here to tell you tonight, you got more inside of you than you really think you have. You've been looking at the glass half empty instead of looking at the glass half full. God has given you, the Bible says, every spiritual blessing for us to richly enjoy. The Bible says he made us complete in him. We're made in God's image and his likeness. Hmm. Which means I have God's DNA. Hmm. Could that be why Jesus said if you just have the faith the size of a mustard seed, the faith the size of a grain of the mustard seed, that you can speak to the mountain and the mountain will be removed? That sounds a lot like Genesis 1. Hmm. In the beginning, God created and God said, we have the same power. Hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The Bible tells us that we can pray for one another, that we may be healed. That sounds a lot like Jesus. 
we have the same DNA. David had a multiplicity of gifts, just as we have a multiplicity of gifts. The thing is, we just don't tap into everything that God has given us. The secret is we have to tap into it. So ma'am, sir, when will we step into that place? When will we stand and move into the DNA that God has given us? The drive, the force, the magnitude, the capacity to wake up every day with purpose, to wake up every day going toward a goal. Something novel, something new, something exciting, something that's never been done before. The Bible says that God gives us the power to create witty inventions. Witty inventions. You, you know what a witty invention is? The witty invention is that little square thing that you hold in your hand called a cell phone that people laughed at years ago. It started, it started remember when the first cell phones came out? They were, they were in a box. You had to carry it around in a bag. Somebody was not happy with that invention, and they dug deeper until it became this little uh, rectangular piece that now we can't live without. A gentleman by the name of Steve Jobs, who was the CEO and one of the founders of Apple, who created the, the cell phone not because he liked to communicate with people. He really did not like to communicate with people. So he created the cell phone so he didn't have to talk to people personally. But now we have this device in our hand, this witty invention that the DNA of Steve Jobs created. With this one little simple device, we can talk to everybody around the world. Mm. But what do we do with the power of it as we hold it in our hand? Research says that we pick up our cell phones 200 plus times a day. We touch our cell phone over 300 times a day. Many of us can't live without the phone to the point that we wake up in the morning grabbing for the cell phone, not to study the scriptures, but to check every notification that we got through the night. A witty invention. The secret is to take that same concept how you use that witty invention and dig deeper into your personal spiritual DNA. What is your drive? What propels you forward? What gets you out of the bed every day? What would you do for free if nobody ever paid you? One thing for me is that music, I would be able to do music for free and I had done music for free for a lot of years. <laughs> But I would do music for free without even blinking because it's part of my passion. Mm. Tap into your spiritual DNA, your drive. Some of us have let our drive wane. We're not moved the way we used to move anymore. We feel like it didn't happen fast enough so I'm not going to do it anymore. Wake up those dreams inside of you. Wake them up. Wake them up. Shake them and wake them up. Get back to the drive. The novel idea. The internet has opened the world to us. It's, everything is available. You're not trapped here in Nigeria, nor am I trapped in the U.S. We have a gateway to the world via the internet. Communicate. Partner. Build liaisons, build net networks to create the new next novel idea. Take all of your abilities and your skill sets and do so in excellence. What is your spiritual DNA? God bless you. Your picture 
of the future that produces passion in you. There's a picture of the future that can keep you up at night to pray all through the night. Just to back something. Because in the midst of crisis, God is batting new things. Our mindset matters at this particular time. All men fail, but the great ones rise again. The physical church was the main church before. Online was an extension. Now, the online church, the digital, digital church, is the main church now. The physical church is the extension. A lot of our churches have become like salt jars that have stored salt in it. And until the salt is sprinkled into the broth that is the rest of society, then the salt has lost its purpose. You feel they are more favored than you? No, sir, they are not. They only went when you were weighing, is this thing really going to represent my brand or not my brand? Somebody help me turn wherever you are. Say, I will go. One of the things I learned today from even our sessions on, re on the Resilient Church is that um, post COVID, um, there are principles and there are lessons that churches must learn to do or to practice on a daily basis in such a way that our usefulness is not only to church people per se, but it's able to be useful information for society. So this is my first time of attending the Exponential Conference, but I've been hearing about it actually. Um, one, of my, one of my past pastor friends told me, he attended two years ago in Lagos and gave me the gist of um, how the program went. And since then, I've been looking forward to actually attending. So when I saw the flyer online for this year's conference and I saw the lineup of the speakers, I was like, wow, this is a place to be. So that was why I'm here. that most of your prayer points, especially in Africa, and more especially in Nigeria, most of your prayer points are based on policy failures. Resilience is not just strength. No, 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 no. Resilience includes adaptability. How do you adapt to different situations? Get in the Word. Read it, study it, listen to those who preach it. As you solve people's issues, as you, as you, as you create environments that will help add value to your people, you're asking, is it a painkiller? Is it a vitamin? And those two will help narrow your focus so you can get to um, whether or not this will really be effective as a church. That the reality of the time is that God does not want the devil to take advantage of us. We don't want to continue to lose our generals in the kingdom or our officers. If the devil doesn't want you to become a general, when you are an officer, he will remove you with something. Right. Okay, so welcome back. Um, what we're going to be doing over the next 25 minutes, basically, is just to... Um, interview and ask um, Kevin some questions. Um, how many people enjoyed, you know, that exhortation that he did? How many people? How many people? 
All right, so wherever you are, do you want to sort of just share one thing, one of the things that you learned um, from there, okay? Um, because it's useful. The Bible says that um, not just the hearers will be blessed, but the doers of the word, right? So what have you learned and what are you going to do um, with what you have learned this eat today? All right, so I'm just going to dive right in into some of the questions that I have curated um, while Kevin was speaking earlier um, and then have him answer some of those questions for us, right? Um, Kevin, that's good? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So, so my first question says, um, reading your, your bio and your profile, I went online, Googled you, went on your website and saw all the amazing things that you have done um, since you started singing and producing. And so my first question is, you, you have won several awards, right? 10 Grammys and 30 stellar awards, amongst others, um, over more than 30 years of your career, right? How do you maintain that level of consistency? in excellence and relevance? Um, and how do you avoid mediocrity and complacency over that kind of um, long career? For me, I, I, I'm a student. I, I remain a student of the game. I remain a student of the music industry. Uh, I'm learning every day. Um, my, my eyes and ears are always open to new things, always looking to try things. You know, we just talked about the novel things. I'm constantly looking for the novel. I'm constantly looking for the next. Uh, the other piece that really does keep me grounded in everything is, is my family. One thing that's constant is your family. The music industry will leave, the gigs will stop, people will stop calling, the phone will stop ringing, your family will be there. If you've nurtured your family, if you've taken care of your family, the goal is not to sacrifice your family on the altar of your career, and I refuse to do that. Uh, been married 27 years, uh, been with my wife for 29 years, four grown children. Uh, that's my balance. That's the balance for me. Amazing. That, that's, that's so awesome. All right. So, so at the beginning of your, of your, of your talk, right, you, you spoke about um, your acronym for DNA, Drive, Nobel, and Ability, right? Um, and I, and I want to just ask you, um, how do you manage, right, to again, sustain that, all right, over a long period of time. In fact, at what point, you know, in your career did you kind of discover that those are some of the things that help people to be excellent and to stay excellent? I never really thought about it. I'm mean, to be honest with you, I never thought about it. For me, it's always, I was always driven to the next thing mm. and <clears throat> trying to learn from the last thing. There's always a lesson you can learn. I, I told uh, uh, our host, Ola, that uh, we were sharing some of the stories from the record. I got a story for all the records. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something you remember to take away. So uh, for me, you really just dig in and, and put everything that you have into every record. I don't hold anything back. And even working now in the new music industry, because I'm dealing with up-and-coming artists. I'm dealing with um, artists that are not signed to record labels, those that have not won any awards. But I put the same energy I put the same work into trying to make them great as well. Uh, but as far as my relevance and, and moving beyond mediocrity, I never wanted to stand still. So I'm constantly learning, constantly growing, constantly practicing. I, I still play. My, my keyboards are on right now in America, right now. Wow. My, my studio gear is on. As soon as I get home, I can unlock my computer and press play and keep working. Interesting. It never stops. Wow. That's amazing. I thought someone would put their hands together for that measure of, of intensity. Okay. Now, again, just talking a little bit about your personal experience, right? Um, so, so we know that you have collaborated with several other stars mm -hmm. and artists to make impact, right? Um, so I believe networking and collaboration is part of the DNA of excellence, right? Um, in, in your careers and also for people who are watching and listening, how, how do you sort of make that happen? It's the law of relationships. As you cultivate one relationship, you don't burn that bridge after that relationship or after you finish the work. I find people tend to burn those bridges instead of realizing that it's about the law of relationships. Each relationship is key to your next relationship. I say it this way. The key to your next open door is not on your keychain. If it were, you would have opened it by now. Mm. It's on somebody else's keychain, and you have to have a relationship with them. So you have to build relationships, and as you build relationships and do great work, 
because the, the goal is also to do amazing work. If you keep the work ethic high, the level of it high, and I challenge my artists. Everybody that I work with, they will tell you, I work, I work them hard. They don't just come to me because it's easy. They come because I'm gonna challenge them and they know when they walk out of that door that we're gonna have the best possible product. Right, thank you very much. Okay, so, so just talking about work, right? Um, uh, before I dive into the other questions that I have. So talking about work, right? Mm -hmm. um, we know, again, that like you just told us now, you work very hard, right? Um, and that you also have a gift for music, right? Mm -hmm. How do you, which, which one is the bigger one, you know, maintaining a balance between the ability, like you said, and the drive. So I think the drive speaks to your work ethics, and then the ability speaks to the gift and the capacity and the talent that you have. Um, how do you ensure that you're working, you're developing your ability and the gift, right, in a way that supports a great work ethic? It, it really boils down to you spend time with and you cultivate what you love. For me, I love God's word, so I spend a lot of time in God's word. I do Bible studies, I'm, I'm, constant, I'm constantly in God's word, but I balance that by being in my studio working on songs working on uh, writing songs. I'm writing songs even when people don't need the songs. I don't wait for somebody to call me and say, I need a song. I write the songs. I, I just finished producing an artist who I wrote a song for five years ago. Wow. And when I met her, I was like, that song was for you. Wow. And that's the way it works. You, you don't wait, you, you work while you're waiting. Otherwise, if, if you try to always get ready, you'll never be ready. Mm -hmm. So I try to keep everything going at the same time, wow. whether I'm writing books, whether I'm working on music, whether I'm spending time with the family, getting away, doing vacations, where you shut the studio down, all of that to me is very va uh, valuable and it also makes me who I am and, and makes the work really the, the greater because even with all of that, rest is still essential. And some people just work, work, work and never enjoy life, nor do they take a moment to enjoy their successes. Mm -hmm. It took me a minute to look back and realize all that I've done because I really don't pay attention to it by the time that you win a Grammy Award, you are a year or a year and a half away from the time you did the record. All right. So it's yep. not like you do the record this week, Definitely. you get a Grammy in a month. Yep. No, it's a year and a half later. So by the time the Grammy comes to the house, it's like, oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I already forgot the project. You're on to something else. So yeah, the goal yeah. is to stay focused and to keep moving forward. All right, great. Thank you very much for that. Okay, so... Um, just going back to your last comment about relationships, right, yes. um, and collaboration. So, again, I, I see that you have collaborated with a lot of people, yes. um, and you have won awards, you know, yes. based on those work, right? Now, at the beginning of the project, yes. were you shooting for awards? How do you also identify people that you collaborate with where they're going to win? Or do you just set out and you go in do great work, and then you trust that it comes out great. I never think about the award. Never think about the, the re reward, honestly. The goal for me when I sit in a room with the artists, we talk more than we work. Mm -hmm. So we're building relationship. And in the conversations, we find out what it is that you want to say. Because uh, I worked with Edwin Hawkins, who did Oh Happy Day in 1969 and had to sing that song his whole life. So I make artists understand that you better fall in love with these songs mm. because you might have to sing them for your whole <laughs> life. I went around the world with Edwin for 25 years singing that song. Wow. So it's very possible. So I'm having this conversation with them. I don't think about the awards. I never think about the awards at all. Uh, you know when you're dealing with A-list artists that there's an opportunity there. You know that they're going to get nominated. But the goal is to put the, put the heart and set your mind on the work and get the best songs. Don't dial anything in. I don't like dialing it in, just expecting something to happen because you just never know. And honestly, the truth of the matter is the songs that you expect to really be popular are rarely the songs that are popular. So I've learned a, a mantra from one of my biblical mentors and one of my teachers, Chuck Swindoll, an incredible Bible teacher in the States, uh, to hold everything loosely. Whatever you're working on, hold it loose. Don't get too attached to it. That way, if God takes it away, it's okay. You get on and keep it moving. But the same thing with the records. Work on them, put your whole heart in it. But when it's over, walk away from it and move on. And if God blesses it and allows it to soar, and because of the relationships, 
No, I don't choose people just because they're popular. I choose people whether or not I think we can relate. Relationship, the, the basis of the word relationship is to be able to relate. Yep. And even some uh, of the most popular artists, I don't know if I can relate to them because our constitutions are different. Mm. Sometimes it's just a constitution thing. And how I operate, how you operate, your work ethic, my work ethic, uh, your sense of values and your sense of principles. And sometimes we have that conversation initially and I could find that out and realize it's not for me and I may recon recommend somebody else to work with them. All right, fantastic. That's mm -hmm. so, 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 so part of being excellent, right, is being able to relate well with people. That's, that's what I hear you say. That's part of the law of relationships. You have right. to be able to relate. And honestly, relationships break down because we can't relate. They're usually built around the work. And to me, it's not that. Many of the people I've worked with through the years, we still communicate. We may not hang out. We may not be friends because our lives have gone in different directions. Yeah. But we still communicate. And I knew many of them before they even started. See, I worked on Kirk Franklin's first record as well as some subsequent records. I worked on Yolanda Adams' uh, records that I've known when she was a school teacher before she became a, a superstar. Wow. See, Donnie McClurkin before he was a superstar. Wow. I met these people back then. So uh, we built relationships back then. We knew we could relate. So as my career started moving, they reached out to me, we collaborated, and the rest is literally musical history. All right, fantastic. Thank you very much. Can we put our hands together for Kevin? Okay, so I have a question on there. It says, in the last one year, right, um, things have changed a lot, and they still keep changing. Yes. Um, so we're making things up as we go along. We're yeah. creating new solutions, solving new problems, problems we didn't know existed um, five, ten years ago, right? So in the, in the process of rapid change, right, how do we navigate this new normal and still maintain a spirit of excellence? That's a great question. I actually created uh, webinars that's on my website for those to be able to see where we deal with this right now because uh, I've always tried to stay ahead of the curves. So I've, I didn't experience some of the stoppages and things that others have. I was not touring, so that didn't affect me. I've always had my studio. So I just stayed in my studio. I feel like I've been quarantined since I was 15 years old. <laughs> because I've been in my studio for all these years, you know, by myself. So it's no big thing. Uh, but what I've encouraged people to do is to embrace now. It's too often what tends to happen is we're constantly thinking about what should have happened. And I lost these gigs. I lost all of this money instead of embracing right now. So uh, uh, I, I, one of my webinars, we called it uh, Now is the Time or the time is now, and right. that acronym for time is this is my element. Mm. Embrace this element right now. This is what it is. And if you don't embrace it, then you're gonna be left behind because even through the pandemic, even through the quarantining, things are still changing. So if you don't, don't embrace the change, you'll get left behind and won't be ready for what's coming up next. So whether it's, uh, this has forced people to look at their personal careers, it's forced people to realize that I should have had a home studio, even if it's just a microphone and a, and a, a means to record as a vocalist for a keyboard player or a musician to be able to record their own tracks and send them anywhere. The internet has changed the world. So even before there was a pandemic, there was an internet. And many of us weren't, really weren't maximizing the internet. If we were maximizing the internet, then we would be collaborating with people around the world. I send tracks and, and receive tracks from your country, from other countries in Africa, as well as uh, uh, parts of Europe and everywhere around the globe. People send me things to either mix, play on, edit, whatever the case may be, because we're maximizing the power of change. And the pandemic didn't invent that change. Absolutely. It put focus on the change. Absolutely. See? It really, it was the crucible that, that, that brought the pressure that made us realize, okay, I need to do something. Yeah. And what I've been encouraging people is to do these things uh, a long time ago. And I'm praying now that people now understand the value of embracing change. And, and like I said, now's the time. This is my element. Take advantage of this element. Take advantage of this time. Wow. Thank you very much. All right, so that's good. It's a good place to clap.
Okay. Now, um, you, you've been in the same line of work, all right, for well over 30 years, and you have stayed relevant, right? So, so maintaining a DNA of excellence over a long period of time, right, requires us to be open to changing trends. When you started in the industry, the music industry, wow. the style of music <laughs> then was different from now, and you're still relevant, right? So, so what is the secret? You know, how do we maintain this ability to transform ourselves and to maintain excellence over a long career span? It starts by, first of all, uh, building your craft. The first thing I built was my ability to play. Okay. And, and a song is never going to change. A song is a song. It's a question of how you play the song. All right. But the songs don't change. It's still the same 13 keys on the keyboard. Nothing <laughs> changed. Okay? From Beethoven's time, from King David's time, to Cain and Abel back in Genesis time, it's still the same amount of notes on the keyboard. The difference right. is there was a harpsichord, so it was less notes even. Oh. But that hasn't changed. So the first thing you do is you build your ability. And once you build your ability to be able to navigate, then you learn also how to play different styles of music. Yeah. See, many of us get locked into one style of music. Yes, I've been successful in the gospel music industry, but I also love different styles and idioms of music. So that's another point of being relevant because what you're able to do then is to take those different influences and put them into the music that you're working on currently. And as you do that, that constantly allows you to grow and change. Now, the other piece is the electronics and the technology. When I grew up, there was pretty much a, key, a piano and an organ in the church. So when the synthesizers came along and all of those types of electronic mediums, we had to embrace those changes. And uh, just as I have been in the industry as a musician, I was also one of the first to embrace those changes. Even down to computers and using computers on stages. I was one of the first ones to use computers and drum machines on records. Now everybody uses a drum machine. So we pioneered some of those things by being the first in those spaces to embrace the changes. The secret is never to run from the change. And I was using the computer when it was this big, sitting on the, <laughs> sitting on the stage, okay? Yeah, uh, yeah. But I wasn't afraid of it. I okay. still did it. I did a vocoder on a record before everybody got hip to the vocoder. The secret is to be ahead of the change. Don't wait for it. Don't wait for it to hit you in the head. Jump ahead of the curve and be innovative, novel, be novel. Find that new and exciting thing Fantastic. and embrace it and run with it. And even now with everything that's going on, I pretty much have a, a, a mini recording studio sitting in my hotel room right now that I could literally wake up and compose a song if I want to. Fantastic. Because I've embraced change, I could sit on an airplane and compose a song. Whereas I used to have to go to the studio, pay $150, $200 an hour, have six musicians come in, singers come in, now, I do it by myself, send a track to somebody to send me the vocals back, send another track to my engineer to mix the song, and he'll send it to me in Nigeria, and I'm done. Fantastic. Because change, because you have to embrace the change. Thank you very much. Wow, that's a very, um, that's a very solid one. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so, someone said, sent me a question, right, and said to ask you um, that, What's been some of the things that you have enjoyed doing the most? Um, and what has been some of the things that, you, that have challenged you the most? Right? So what's been some of the most challenging elements of your careers and your projects? Um, and which ones have you found the most rewarding? The most rewarding things, I would say, is having the world embrace your songs. It's something that you birthed in a production. Whether you wrote the song or not, it's something that we helped to birth and put into the earth. And all of a sudden you hear the world singing these songs or you turn on the radio or you turn on the television and you hear the world singing these songs. That is extremely rewarding because you know that you were there in the birthing room. You were in the sterile suite when it was created and now the world loves it. It's, that's amazing to me that it gets all the way around the world. That's unbelievable, absolutely. And people, you ride by them in their cars and they're playing your music. It's, it's, it's something crazy about that to me. I just, it's, it's a God thing. Uh, as far as the challenges, eh, I haven't had a whole lot of challenges, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, occasionally you deal with some difficulties when you have to, you know, uh, I hire, you hire people and then you have to release people. That's hard because 
this music thing, you build a, a family. It's a family. It's a relationship. We, 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 we connect on a deeper level. It's not just we go out and get something to eat. We speak the same language musically. Yeah. So when you have to make musical changes, that's hard. Uh, you bring people into your family, that's very difficult, your musical family. Um, live, sometimes playing live when I started was difficult because I would, I would just get sick to my stomach before I would have to go on stage. I don't know what it was. I think I was just nervous. I was scared because I had not done it. Everybody else that I was playing with at that time when I got with the Hawkins family, they had been doing it for 10, 15 years, you know? And I was the new kid and they thought I was pulled together, but I was a ball of nerves when I started, you know? It took me a while to really get comfortable. And the only way to do it is to really do it. You have to do it on a regular basis. All right. Practice does not make permanent, or practice does not make perfect. Practice makes permanent. Wow. So whatever you yeah. practice and you do on a regular basis, it becomes permanent, permanent in you, yes. As long as we're in the flesh, we'll never be perfect, okay? We're always going to make mistakes. Even if I play the same song 20 times, there's going to be a mistake somewhere. But it will make permanent the way you do it, the regimen, how you practice, how you perfect your gift, you know? So that would be probably the challenge. But the best part is hearing your music around the world. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you very much for that wonderful answer. All right, so I'm going to just do two more questions, and then sure. we'll, we'll wrap this up, right? Sure. Um, so when we were chatting earlier, right, um, you did say to me that you, you are a man of many parts. Um, you run Bible studies on Clubhouse now. Um, you speak all over the world, and of course, you produce music and a couple of other things, right? Uh, so, so being someone who has multiple interests, right, how do you, again, maintain a level of excellence, you know, the DNA of excellence in all of those things that you do and when you do do them? Take each one of them to the highest level you can. If I'm, if I'm writing uh, uh, books, like I'm writing three right now. I'm, I'm, three books? I'm writing three books right now. Wow, yes. interesting. Three, di three different books on three slightly different subjects. And I'm trying to hurry those up because I have three more in my mind that I want to start on. Wow. So that so makes six. That makes six. All yes. Right. So I have to and how many have you written stop already? myself. I've written <clears throat> I've written one complete book and then I've done a couple of ebooks. Okay. Uh, the ebooks are very easy and, and just pithy thoughts, knock, knock them out and get them out there. But these are longer books and the subject matter is taking a little bit longer. And because I do so many things, sometimes I have to stop working on my books to work on the other things. But the goal is to put your whole heart and soul into everything and study it. Study it. That's the other thing. My wife and I are avid readers. She just finished her master's uh, after having three grown children and being married 30 years almost. Wow. So we are driven. We, we both have that DNA. But we are avid readers. We study whatever it is we're going after. You know, I'm constantly reading about the industry, what's going on with the music changes. I also work in, in the in industry in the law side of things as a musicologist. The musicologist is the person who uh, challenges copyright law. Okay. And when people steal other people's songs, I'm the guy they come to to prove that the song was stolen. Oh, wow. Yes. So, I, I mean, I... I'm constantly taking on new tasks and new ventures, but you have to study it, you have to read about it, you have to excel, you have to not be complacent, you have to not sit in the same place. I don't let any dust get up under my feet. I'm constantly moving and constantly growing. Wow. So, so to be honest, Kevin, just listening to you, you don't sound like someone who will then find time to go on holidays or do any of those things. Do sure. you have hobbies or habits, things that you do outside of work? Uh, hobbies for me, relax? Uh, uh, vacation, yes, I do know how to vacate and I, knew how to, I know how to shut down. I okay. do know how to shut down. And when I shut down, I shut all the way down. So I try to get all the projects off my plate as far as records are concerned so no clients are bothering me uh, and we, we get it done. But yeah, we know how to shut down. But the thing is, hobby-wise, I don't really have a whole lot of hobbies. I like, my wife and I like watching movies, so we'll sit and just binge like we did Game of Thrones. It's, what, set eight seasons? We did it in two weeks. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we literally were watching almost round the clock. We'd stop and eat and just finish watching it because we were just so, so uh, stuck on it. But that's, that's kind of how we roll, you know? Uh, she's working on things, I'm working on things. Uh, but then we always, the, the, the beauty for me is that I work from home. So because I work from home most of the time, I'm able to break away, spend time with family, do my meals with the family, 
get out, do things with the wife and family as well. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. that, that's all part of that balance. So yeah, it's still balanced. I'm just busy. All right. Yeah. Fantastic. Can I put your hands together for Kelvin? Final question. Sure. So, so you spoke so eloquently about drive, right? Novel. Um, and of course, ability is much earlier. Um, so if somebody says, I seem to have lost my drive, um, I can't seem to think of any novel thing to do, um, and it looks like I've reached the peak of my ability. How will that kind of person jumpstart themselves again? I tell people like that that you have to see a king in order to be a king. You have to see somebody doing what it is that you wanted to do. I didn't just wake up one day and decide this is what I wanted to do. I saw people doing it. I, I, ironically, I saw Edwin Hawkins and the Hawkins family doing it. I saw Andre Crouch. I saw James Cleveland. I saw Richard Smallwood and Thomas Whitfield. I saw them doing it. And because I saw kings doing it on that level, I said, I can do that. So you have to uh, uh, be you have to aspire first. Yeah. It's, it's aspiration and then the inspiration as well. So I would say probably inspiration first. You're inspired by what you see. And then that will lead to the aspiration of what you want to be. So you have to see a king in order to be a king. So even for that person who's, who feels like they've lost their drive or doesn't have a drive at all, do some research. Because you were created with a purpose. You were create, created for God, wanted you to bring forth glory into the earth. So the question is what and how. It all starts with what moves you, what it is that you like. What are you drawn to? You know, some of us, we, we're too busy comparing ourselves to other people and contrasting ourselves with other people instead of saying, okay, I like this skill set in them. I like what they do there. I don't like the rest. But then I like what this person does. So you, you glean from wherever you can. You glean and get the information until the fuse is lit. And once the fuse is lit, you run with all your might. The secret is don't let the fuse go out. The problem is we get started and we get excited for a minute. It doesn't happen soon enough and then we just stop. And then you have people who do this their whole lives and they go from career to career to, to gift to talent to talent job to job, and they never find that one thing that they were tapped in to do. The goal is to find that one thing, master it, take it to the highest level that you possibly can, and God will honestly honor it. Fantastic. Thank you so, so much, Kevin. Can we put it in together? I mean, I, I have lots of questions that I still like to ask, but <laughs> we're, we're, we're out of time, right? So sure. uh, one last thing I'm going to ask you to do, just to look at the camera and say a word of prayer you know, over, over our audience, both the people who are in the auditorium and then those who are not here. Of course. As I sit here in Nigeria, uh, thinking back over my life, realizing that I one time thought that I didn't have what it took. I one, at one time uh, thought I wouldn't be able to make it until I saw someone doing what it is that I wanted to do. You have to find that spark. You have to be able to find that one thing that will light the spark, light the fuse in you to be able to go forward. So Father, in Jesus' name, we pray right now. We ask that your will would be made manifest in the earth. We pray for the ones who are watching right now who are trying to find that drive, that force behind their actions, the the new novel thing that you have created for them, that ability, that talent, that skill set. They, they know what other people tell them that they are, but they don't like that. They, they know what other people say they should be doing, but they, they know that's not it. We ask that you would allow that light bulb to come on, bring that spirituality and that, uh, uh, that, that wisdom to be able to understand so that they can tap into what it is that you would have them to do. You've created every one of us for a purpose, Lord God. And because of that, we want to maximize our time in the earth. We want to be able to walk out the fact that we are made in your image and your likeness. We want to be able to make our contribution to the earth so that when we die, it will matter that we lived. Help us to find it, God. Help us to tap in and help us to be successful at it. 
Let it not be a trudge. Let it not be something that we hate to do every morning, but something that we run happily after. Lead us, God. Direct us. And for those of us that are already walking in it, help us to be able to help others. Help us not to walk away from those who are struggling, trying to find it. Help us to be truthful in our stories and to tell them how we found it, how we tapped into our purpose. We realize your word says that to everything, there's a season and a time and a purpose under the heaven. Help us to find our season, maximize our time, and utilize our purpose. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you very much. All right. So just before we wrap it up, um, Kevin has agreed to play something for us. I'll sing something. Okay. So, Kevin, if you just sort of make your way over here. <laughs> All right. So, so Kevin is going to play something. Um, and then we will go ahead and take communion, say a word of prayer, and bring the service to a close. Remember this song? We lift our hands in the sanctuary. You say. Okay, you know that song. You know that song. We produced a song with a, another guy who's probably about the same height as Kirk Carr. He says, someone asked the question, why do we sing when we lift our hands to Jesus? You know this song? What do we really mean? Someone maybe, huh? When we sing, at times, at times we may be crying and nothing's even wrong. I sing, I sing with three parts, church. His act, that's the reason. Glory, hallelujah, you say. I give the praises. Ah, uh -huh. glory. You're the reason. Yeah, you know these songs. You know these songs. Ah, uh, you know this song. For every mountain, you've brought me over. For every For every blessing, hallelujah, for this time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know these songs. You know these songs. Now, I wrote a song for a young lady. The song said, uh, I've come through many hot trials. Through temptation on every hand, though Satan strive to stop me and to place my feet on sinking sand, and through the pain and all of the sorrows, through the tears and all of my fears. The Lord was there to keep me, for he's kept me in the midst of it all. You know that song? Ah. What about, uh, let's see, uh, let's see. Uh, what is it? 
It's your time for a miracle. It's your time for a miracle. Uh, that's not the one, though. The one is, uh, 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 what was the other song? What was the other? What is it? You are God alone, for you are God alone, for you are, oh, I, I messed up the words, didn't I? For you alone are God. For you are God alone. What about uh, we fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. For a saint is just a sinner who fell down uh -huh. and got up say it again we we fall down but we uh-huh uh-huh What about this song? What about this song? What about this song? Uh, great is your mercy toward me, your loving kindness toward me, your tender mercy I see. Always providing for me. Great is your mercy towards me. Great is your grace. God bless you guys. Hallelujah. Thank you so very much, Calvin. We're truly grateful. Can we put our hands together for him one more time? Everybody at home, those who are in the auditorium, thank you very much. Please, you may just go back to your yes. seat. All right. Okay, so wherever you are, this, um, whatever you are, we're just going to spend another five minutes or so just praying about some of the things that we've heard and learned this today. Um, and I want you to just pray this prayer, all right, um, with, with, with a lot of passion, I mean, with a lot of faith in your heart, okay? I want you to pray this prayer, believing, you know, that the God of heaven and the heart is going to do something different, something unique um, in your life as you go ahead to pray. So first and foremost, Kevin did speak about the concept of DNA. He spoke about the drive, he spoke about novel, and he spoke about abilities. Can I ask you tonight that you begin to commit yourself into the hands of God? I want you to pray that the Holy Spirit stirs up fresh drive, fresh fire, fresh passion in you in the name of Jesus. The passion for excellence, the drive for growth. I wanted to pray, I wanted to ask in the name of Jesus that that grace is coming upon you in the name of Jesus, irrespective of what you have done in your life so far. I wanted to pray that the Holy Spirit sustains your drive in the name of jesus i wanted to pray that the holy spirit sustains your drive in the name of jesus christ i wanted to pray that new things are coming your way he spoke about novelty i wanted to pray that fresh ideas fresh vision fresh understanding is coming your way in the name of jesus that the lord is opening the eyes of your understanding to see new things fresh things that you're able to pursue in the name of jesus i wanted to pray tonight and ask in the name of jesus that the holy spirit is staring 
stirring up new things in your heart in the name of Jesus Christ. That the Holy Spirit is helping you to find fresh ways to be able to execute the same things that you have done before such that they are fresh and you can make significant impact and climb the ladder of excellence in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray that your abilities increase in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, seest thou a man who is diligent in his work. He will stand before kings and not before mere men. The Bible says that there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. Can you ask in the name of Jesus for fresh understanding fresh capabilities fresh abilities in the name of Jesus I wanted to pray for the grace to be diligent to be able to put in the work that will put you before kings in this season of your life in the name of Jesus I wanted to pray that all through this month of March this is your month month of diligence it's your month of excellence it's your month of drive it's your month of novelty it's your month of fresh abilities and capabilities in the name of Jesus can you just pray and receive that grace receive that grace to Today, receive that grace in the name of Jesus every day of this month for the rest of this year you are, you are, you, are, you receive the capacity to thrive to be self-driven in the name of Jesus Christ in Jesus name we have prayed finally I wanted to pray about one other thing that Kevin spoke about we spoke about global relevance relevance beyond a generation relevance beyond a place of geography relevance beyond one industry i wanted to pray that that is your portion in the name of jesus i wanted to receive the grace for it i wanted to receive the wisdom for it i wanted to receive the capacity for it i wanted to receive the vision for it in the name of jesus relevance 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 that transcends one industry relevance that transcends one generation relevance that transcends one location can you pray and receive it today in the name of Jesus? I wanted to pray for that measure of relevance and the grace, the passion to be able to work for it, the diligence to be able to work for it in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. prayed. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and break bread. Um, I wanted to take whatever your element of communion can you please pass me something over there thank you um, i want you to please take your um, communion elements wherever you are whether you are at home or you're at work wherever you are can you just um, take your communion elements and let's break bread this evening as we pray together jesus said as we do this we should do it in remembrance of him and one of the things that Jesus procured for us is that capacity um, to be excellent, is the capacity to be creative. And so this, I mean, as, as today, as we break bread, I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit is activating in you the spirit of excellence, newer levels of excellence, newer depths of growth and excellence in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we are grateful. Because you're the one who has given us your spirit for inspiration. You're the one who has given us your spirit and is staring in us the capacity to dare new things. And so this day we come before you and we ask that as we partake of your table, we command a provoking and an invocation of the spirit of excellence upon us in the name of Jesus. The will and the capacity to dare great things in the name of Jesus. The strength of vision and the courage of heart to stay the course we receive today in the name of Jesus. Father, we say be exalted and Lord, we pray for that one person who might have become derailed in their pursuit of excellence. We ask in the name of Jesus that Lord, we will give them fresh grace in the name of Jesus. We pray for that one person who says, I feel over overwhelmed right now like I have beaten more than I can chew. Holy Spirit we ask that you will strengthen them to be able to carry to fruition the vision that you have given them in the name of Jesus. And Lord for people who lack resources to be able to pursue their dreams, we ask that you would line them up with favor and miracles in the name of Jesus. Thank you Father because you've heard us in Jesus name we have prayed. Amen. Alright so you may go ahead and partake of the communion. Hallelujah. All right, so we'd not like to close the service without giving someone an opportunity to give their hearts to the Lord Jesus because Jesus is the source of excellence. 
your relationship with Jesus is one of the things that puts you in the position to be able to manifest the excellence that is the nature of God. That is what puts you in the path, on the path of growth. Because when you become a child of God, the Holy Spirit is given to you. And it begins to stir up in your heart the capacity for excellence. So today, I want to invite you into a relationship with Jesus. If you have never at any point in your life asked Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior. I want to give you that opportunity right this minute, wherever you may be. I want you to just make that decision today and say, I want Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. I no longer want to continue on this trajectory of my life. I want Jesus to be connected to me. I want to be transformed. I want, to, I want, I want the power of sin to be broken over my life so that I can walk and tread in the path of excellence and consistent growth. So if you're that person, wherever you're joining us today, um, whatever platform you might be joining from, I want you to make this very important, in fact, the most important decision of your life today, right now. And so I want you to go onto that platform, go to the comment section and put in there that you're about to give your life to Jesus, that this is your first time you want to give your life to Jesus. And of course, just watch out. Our counselors are there. You will see a link in there. I want you to please click that link. Leave us your details and your information so that we can get in touch with you and help you on this journey, okay? But before then, let us pray together. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you tonight. I mean, I want to pray with you um, right this minute as I usher you into the kingdom of God to become a part of the family of Jesus. So wherever you have, can I ask that you say this prayer after me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you today and I ask that you be my Lord and my Savior. I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart, save my soul, wash me with the blood, with your blood, and cleanse me, transform me, change my nature from the nature of sin to the nature of life. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, tonight we pray for every single one of your children who are finding their way back home, who are connecting and reconnecting with you. We ask in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you will change their nature. You will break the old of the nature of sin upon their lives. And, Lord, you will give them the nature of righteousness in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for all of these ones who have come home tonight. We say be exalted. Receive all of the glory. Uh, we ask that you will cause them to stand and to be established in faith in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you've heard us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. So if you pray that prayer with me and you made that decision, I want to welcome you to the family of God. You have made the most important decision of your life uh, today. And so, um, like I said earlier, I want you to please go to the comment section of whatever platform you're joining us from. You will see a link that has been posted there by my colleagues who are manning those, uh, who are manning those platforms. All I want you to just do is this. Just leave your information there because we want to be able to reach out to you. The decision that you have made today, um, you require some support, all right, to be able to walk in the reality of the newness of life that you have received. So we want to be that church that is providing that support to you. So please um, don't be embarrassed, don't be shy, just leave us your details and then we'll get in touch with you. Thank you very much for making this. Can we put it together wherever you are? Let's just celebrate everybody who's making the decision. Um, you, if you're in the auditorium, you may just have your seat. All right, uh, very quickly before we bring this. Um, service to a close. We never like to close our services without giving to God. And so I want to give you an opportunity um, today to give something to God. All right. I want you to give to God from a heart of excellence. I want you to give to God, um, recognizing the fact, you know, that giving is one of the laws of growth. Okay. I want you to also give to God because you recognize that God is your ultimate source. And I want you to demonstrate that you really love Him and that you trust Him. All right. Through your giving this time um, today. So the platforms through which you can give. Um, the avenues and all the information you need to give have been displayed on your screen right now, whether you want to make a transfer. Um, if you're watching on, one, on our website, you can also go on our website. You find a link there through which you can give. Okay, um, I want you to just engage any of those platforms. So whether you're in Nigeria or outside of Nigeria, we have multiple opportunities and channels for you to be able to give something to God. All right. So this offering, again, is, is something that you're giving to God. So shall we pray over our offerings? Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful because we have um, the opportunity and the capacity to give to you. 
And so, Lord, we bring our offerings, our tithes, and every other thing that your people are giving unto you today. And we ask in the name of Jesus, the Lord, this will bring pleasure to your heart in the name of Jesus. And the Lord, every single person who is grieving, uh, who is giving right now, then, Father, you will cause them um, to also receive the rewards of giving in the name of Jesus. And perhaps there is one person who has a challenge that money um, is supposed to meet, uh, but they are right now working in lack and in need. We ask in the name of Jesus, the Lord, you will open doors of favor unto them in jesus name we have prayed in jesus name we have prayed all right so i want you to go ahead and give um of course just make sure that you, you do it very very cheerfully okay uh, finally i want to welcome everybody who is joining us for the first time ever at any event of the elevation church whether in person or digitally all right um, we don't want to take you for granted we recognize the fact that um, you've enjoyed the time that you have spent with us we pray that god will bring you and we're so excited that, we, that he brought you and we don't want to take that for granted so again whatever platform you're joining us from right now i want you to look into the comment section some of my colleagues over there have posted a link there now this is what i wanted to do two things i wanted to very quickly go into the comment section and let us know that it's your first time all right just post a comment there that says this is my first time at any event of the elevation church the second thing i wanted to do is this um one of my colleagues like i said has posted a link all right what i wanted to do is please click on that link right leave us your details all we want is just um, your email address and your names all right and whichever city of the world you're joining us from and the reason is this we want to be able to send you a thank you note have someone call you and also send you a gift, all right? I want to send you a digital gift just to appreciate you for joining us today, um, for being a part of our midweek event um, this first week of the month of March 2021. And we just believe that the God who has brought you has blessed you this evening um, and that you have been tremendously refoiled, uh, refoiled and motivated to achieve and to aspire for excellence to God. So thank you very much. And of course, we ask that you not be a stranger. We'd like you to please come back again and again and again, be part of our event. And if you can make it to any of our, um, uh, any of our Sunday services in person, in fact, that will also be very, um, very, very much appreciated. And of course, if you don't live in a city where um, we have our expressions, continue to please worship with us online and digitally. And we just trust that the God of the heaven and the heart that we serve at the Elevation Church will make greatness um, common in your life because this is the Elevation Church and our one assignment on that God is to make greatness come on. So on behalf of our lead pastors, Pastors Bolaniwa and Godman Akilabi, I say welcome to you. Thank you so very much um, for joining us today. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, so that's it today. I believe everybody has enjoyed this midweek service. And we're going to keep the file and the videos, you know, on our different platforms so you can go back and enjoy it and watch it over and over and over again. Um, loads of deep truth and nuggets, you know, about excellence that Kelvin has shared with us today. I wanted to watch them and listen to them over and over again. And, of course, explore other resources and materials that we have at the Elevation Church that will help you to grow on the path of excellence. And I say, see you at the top. Hallelujah. All right, so that brings us to the end today. God bless you. Um, we'll see you again on Sunday um, at any of our services, whether it's online or in person. And we just trust that between now and then, the hand of God is with you. You'll continue to grow and to shine in the name of Jesus. Amen. So bye-bye. Thank you very much. God bless you. That was an amazing time we had today. We'd love to encourage you to join us this Sunday, either in person or online for more of God's blessings. Please note that for crowd control purposes, you'll be required to book your seat in advance if you prefer to attend the in-person service. Our registration portal opens every Friday at 12 noon via elevationng.org forward slash book your seats. The just concluded exponential conference for pastors and leaders was greatly insightful. You too can relieve the exponential conference by getting the conference messages which are now available via the link now being displayed on the screen. We are available to help you with the counsel you need, especially in this season of growth. You can contact our TC Care line through any of the numbers now being displayed on the screen or via email to counseling at elevationng.org. Make vital connections that will propel you along the path of your divine destiny. Join any of our small groups by visiting connectgroup.elevationng.org. That's not all. We also have an online community you can thrive in. Simply visit onlinechurch.elevationng.org, subscribe, engage, get counsel, pray, and make friends. Our resource center is open. Get past messages, various books by great authors, branded merchandise by the Elevation Church, and so much more. Take advantage of the great packages in our e-store 
by visiting elevationng.org forward slash resources. It's our season to grow and thrive and to help us deliver a better ministry experience for you and your family. We would like to hear from you. Please fill out a quick survey using the feedback form via the link now showing on the screen. Thank you. Let's grow this season with the life-giving word of God. So we'll see you at our next medical event. Enjoy the rest of the week.